Hey there, how are you? I hope you're doing well and I wanna let you know I really appreciate you spending some time with me today. Welcome to a, a classic project pan. <laughs> I've, I've been mulling this over for the last couple of months because I mean, let's face it, with being home as often as we have been, it's, it's really been an opportunity to take a good hard look um, at my makeup collection and really think about what inspires me, what I want to pan, what just completely is something that is boring and um, maybe something that doesn't suit my needs anymore. And I've really just, I've been playing around with different organization styles and thinking about project pans. And I think that I finally achieved peace <laughs> in this, in this arena of my life, because I, I, I talked about this a couple of videos ago, but I really struggle with trying to find a balance of what works for me because I'm the type of person that I need to see things. I'm very visual and especially with organizing, if it is out of sight, it is certainly out of mind. And then I also want to be more minimal because when I see the clutter, it just kind of creates another level of frustration for me because I think, oh, I've got to keep that maintained and clean and it's just, my day is already very, very hectic and busy as it is. I don't have time to add more stuff and maintaining more stuff into the mix. I think that I finally found the happy balance um, in this regard because my vanity drawer, I've really played around with different ways of storing things over the last couple of months to see what would work for me. And as I've evaluated my backup stash, I've really gone through and finally figured out a way to consolidate most of what I have into this drawer. So that's thrilling, exciting. Here's a picture of kind of where we're starting. Don't worry, I will post a video on what's going on with the backup stash in my makeup drawer because pretty much the way that I had it is I'd have my, my everyday makeup of things that I would have in my vanity and then I would keep my backup stuff in acrylic drawers in my closet. Pretty much the only makeup I have in there now is my um, stash of eyeshadow palettes. As I went through and I was thinking about my backup stash because that's where I've kind of spent the money when I purchased makeup since we've been home for the past year. I, I, I had a little sit down with myself to be like, you need to get this under control. It's time to get back into panning. It's time to get back to the momentum that you had before. I have reorganized my vanity to where I see everything. I've got all of my bottles of, of setting spray. I've got my bronzers, all my blushes, all my lip products my eye products, everything where I can sift through. And even if I'm project painting, I am still aware <laughs> of everything else that's in there. So I think, I think we're on a good path. I will keep you posted on that, um, do a video on what's in that drawer. And like I said, over the next while, we are going to be doing a continuous project pan of getting through the vanity drawer. I wanna come up with something catchy for that kind of a project pan, like pan the drawer. I, I, don't, I don't know. I'll figure something out, but now it's time to tackle and see what we can do to reduce the drawer. So on that note, to get this project pan started, I have chosen 12 items out of my collection because I feel like two of them are kind of gimme items. So it'll be a classic project tin pan. So let's do this. The first one is going to be kind of the gimme product. Um, and it's been on my mind of something I've wanted to pan out of my collection for a while, and it is this bottle of Michael Kors Sexy Amber Perfume. As you can tell, the perfume is at the bottom of this, of this bottle. I'm hoping, honestly, that I can get this done by the end of October. I do have several other bottles of perfume, and I'm not the type of, of person that I like to keep a ton of perfume, but since I've got it on display kind of in my bathroom, I'm, I'm aware that humidity and things are impacting um, the, the fragrances and whatnot. And so I really want to make a very, uh, concerted effort to go on and start whittling down the stash. So this is going to be bottle number one. And the next I'm going to tackle another bottle of perfume. That's just easy for every day. Um, it, it was a fragrance that had to grow on me, um, just because it, it is quite strong. Um, I bought it because it had my name in it. So there's that. Um, but over time, it has really turned into a classic scent for me and people uh, compliment me on this because I think now that they associate me with wearing this scent all the time because I've worn it for months and months and months, but 
it really is lovely and I do enjoy it. Would I repurchase it? We'll see. I mean, I, I've got to get through some other bottles of perfume first, but I do really enjoy this. The next product has been something that's on my mind because I need to be more diligent, um, and that's using a moisturizer at night. When I get in the shower, I'm using my Clinique Cleansing Balm, and then I go through and wash my face, and so by the time I get out of the shower, I'm like, I'm good, I'm good. So I've had this jar of L'Oreal H Perfect Cell Renewal Night Cream kind of sitting around. I do love this product. I've actually panned a full jar of this before and then I just got out of the habit. But I will say, in the last couple of months, I have noticed my skin has been drying out more and more and more. And it's not necessarily due to the weather. I think it's hormone shifts and stress and all those other things. And I know, I know a lot of that is from me not using a moisturizer. So I need to get back in the habit. As far as using this, a little bit of a dip in this, but I, this is gonna take me months to get through. It's very nice, it's not super thick, it has a light floral scent to it, and what I like to do is just take a dollop, I rub it in between my fingers, and then rub it in circular motions around my skin. Sometimes I'll follow through with a jade roller just to really get work that product into my skin, but like I said, I need to just, I need to just use this. <laughs> And remember, like, girl, put some moisturizer on your face before you go to bed because, I mean, I feel like I'm in the right direction already, like making sure I take off my makeup every night, but we need to do this extra step because it's starting to show. It's starting to show. <laughs> With the crow's feet and craviness and all those fun things about aging. It's just one of those things that we got to take care of. The next product is actually, I bought this in pursuit of dealing with the crepiness I was starting to notice under my eyes. So product number three is going to be this Tula Skin Care Glow and Get It Cooling and Brightening Eye Balm. And it claims to have probiotics and superfoods in it. What attracted me to this is I was on Ulta's website when I started noticing some of the crepiness and, and dryness under my eyes. And so I bought a couple of different products and this was one of the ones that came recommended. Although the reviews are a little bit polarizing on this because some people say that it makes their eyes burn. I will tell you if you use this balm on your upper lids, yes, it makes your, your eyes burn. But if you keep it only focused on the under eyes, you're good, like it's fine. It is a light blue um, stick balm that you apply. And so this is where I currently am. Maybe I should do a note card next to this so you can see how much it changes. Cause I mean, you really don't have to use a whole lot. I just do like one, one and a half swipes per eye and then just kind of tap it in with my ring fingers. But it really is nice. Um, I like to apply this after I do my moisturizer before I go on and apply my foundation. And, and I mean, I've, I've noticed a difference, like especially yesterday, my makeup looked really good like all day long, even as I went into work later in the day and I, I was at work till like what, eight o'clock, nine o'clock or eight, eight or eight thirty last night. And when I got home, like I had dinner and I chilled and visited with my husband for a while. And when I went and, and looked in the mirror later, my makeup still looked good considering it had been on my face all day. And I think this has something to do with that helping, especially with the under eye area, not needing to reapply concealer during the day. So I would recommend this. I'll keep you posted on it um, as always with the other products. And one of the things like if you're uh, wanting cruelty-free products, this is something that you might keep on your radar. The next product um, is something that intrigued me. We'll see how long it takes. But um, a couple months ago, I happened to be walking around HEB and I noticed this Korean um, cosmetic line called the Cream Shop. Um, I was really attracted to a couple of products. Like I bought a, a lip balm that um, tastes and smells like watermelon. This is the banana under eye brightening powder. And then I picked up an eyeliner. And as I started using this, I really like the consistency of this powder. It's very fine and super milled. When I initially purchased this, it smelled like genuine bananas. It doesn't smell that way anymore. So a eh, little bummer there. But um, what kind of intrigued me about this product is um, the shelf life <laughs> because when I know that's going to sound so weird to say, but when you look at the back of all these products from the cream shop, the shelf life is like six months. So to me that like sparked my curiosity of like, are these ingredients so fresh that like seriously six months, like we've, we've got to use this. Like you can't acquire a stash of products like this and then not use them. Or is this like, you know, really underestimated. So I have been using this as an under eye setting powder. It does come with a puff. I don't really like the puff um, because I'm really only using this on my under eye area because I'm still using a powder on the rest of my face, but this is a beautiful 
um, setting powder. And like I said, even though I was noticing crepiness for a little bit, um, now that I'm moisturizing my skin again, like this is absolutely beautiful. And like I said, my makeup has looked really awesome over the last little bit because, you know, this is one of the things that I've been using to help with my um, concealer. So I went through and um, after I bought this powder, I picked up an e.l.f. blending perfector brush. Um, it came in a, I want to say it was a duo set at Target. It has kind of a rose gold um, handle, but these two products together work super, super well because I can go through and then blend this over um, my concealer with the powder and it just does a really nice job. So I wanted to share that tip. I have no idea how long this powder is going to take me to get through. I mean, I've got a full jar going here. So the line for the powder is about here. And like I say, I only... I'm only using this to brighten up my under eyes, so it's going to take me a while, but we'll see. I'll keep you posted. Like I said, I can't smell the bananas anymore out of this powder, but we'll see in a couple of months if it really does kind of go off in six months or if you can use it for a little longer. So I don't know. That just, that, that made me curious. Um, going on that note, the powder that I'm using for the rest of my face is going to be item number one, two, three, four, mm, five. My Wet n Wild um, pressed powder in warm light. I have quite a few backup powders in my collection, so this is something that I'm getting through. I have already hit pan, and so I'm hoping by the end of October that this will be done and out of my collection because I actually have another Wet n Wild powder, and then I've got a couple of MAC Mineralized Skin Finishes in Light Plus, which is the high-end version of this Wet n Wild powder. Actually, I should say Wet n Wild is a good dupe. Um, for the MAC Light Plus uh, Mineralized Skin Finish, and then I have a little sample size of uh, Charlotte Tilbury powder. So I want to go on and start moving some setting powders out of my collection because I've got a backup stash of those. So that's where I am. We're going to just keep on using it. I really love this powder. I've been using it for years. It is a great um, option if you want to just go to the drugstore and pick up a good setting powder. It doesn't leave you feeling super cakey, although if you don't moisturize your skin, <laughs> you'll, you will notice a difference, but um, I'm back to loving my makeup again with this powder. I have a lot of concealers on hand at the moment, and so I have been working steadily on this L'Oreal True Match um, uh, corrector. It claims to have eye cream in it, concealer. I wear the shade C34. Yes, it's eye cream and a concealer, and it claims to have pure hyaluronic acid. Um, I'm back to really using this because it is quite creamy. It's really yellow when I apply it to my skin in this color, but it actually ends up working out quite well because it blends in nicely. Um, it works well with this Cream Shop Banana Powder. I mean, as you can tell, I do have a really good skin match going right now, and so I like it. I'm at the point where every once in a while I go on to put the lid on this, and then I shake it like this to make all the products sink down to the bottom. So as soon as I open it up, I have to very quickly dab it onto my fingers and then apply it because it gathers up in the bottom. I'm curious how long what's left in here is going to take me because when I let it stand up on its own, I can start seeing through the little window that I have used quite a bit of a product, but definitely want to get this out because I've got a lot of concealers on hand right now. And I've been using this for a while. I've updated this made for Mocha Maybelline single in my pan that palette, pan those eyeshadows updates. I actually had to go repress it over the weekend just because it was turning into such a mess that it was a big pain to use. Um, I have hit substantial pan. This that you see is just what's pressed into the bottom and I'm slowly starting to work on that. I'm gonna use this till it's gone and keep this in the project pan. I like to use this in my brows. I like to use it to deepen up the outer corners of my eyes. I like to use it to line my upper lash line right now. So I think that I can finish this probably by the end of November. Then this next shadow I chose for my collection because I've also been working on this. This is my MAC Single in Warm Brown. I really, really do love this. I have found that this is the most flattering transition shade of anything that I have ever used. And regardless if I want to wear a super warm look or if I want to wear a super cool tone look or if I want to wear a mixed look of wearing both to get a, a more neutral vibe on it, this shadow is the way to go. And especially right now as I'm starting to see they're not showing up as well on camera right now, but in person I have silvers coming into the top of my hair. As you can see, I've got 
silvers coming into the side. I've got some lighter areas going over here. I'm really kind of evaluating where I want to go with my makeup right now in terms of my eyeshadow. But this is something that I know works for me regardless of what's going on because it is such a good match for my skin tone. Um, even though I am panning eyeshadows out of palettes right now, I'm going to do my best to move this out of my collection because I actually have several pans of this because it is such a good um, shade match for me to use as a transition shade. And the next product I really, 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 really enjoyed over the last couple of months. It is my MAC Blush and Peaches. I have gotten to the point where I've hit a substantial pan in this, so exciting. I want to go through and finish this. Um, unlike my Clinique blush and Colourpop <laughs> that I've been on the, the struggle bus with for years, um, I feel that this is very achievable in a way to move out a blush from my collection. So like I said, I enjoy this. It is such a flattering uh, shade um, for my skin tone. It is quite subtle. I can build it up. It matches with a lot of the looks that I want to wear for fall. It is the blush that I'm wearing currently. It is the blush that I've worn for the past several months um, when I wore that purple sunset vibe, I wore this blush. I, I've worn it with just neutral brown every day, like easy go to work makeup when I pan the ColourPop Granger um, shadows. I've, I've worn it with this look where I wanna do more of a smoky autumnal look with golds and reddish browns. I've worn it with green eyeshadows. Like this is just gorgeous for an everyday color if you don't wanna go necessarily a really pink direction or there's just enough pink in this shade where it's not coral, but it's not peach where it comes across as being orange or apricot on your skin. It's just, it's lovely. Love this blush. This has gotta be one of my favorite blushes of all time just because it's so easy. I mean, it's boring, it's basic, but it's easy and it matches with most eye looks that I wanna wear. So it's a good staple product for my collection. Then the next product I have is I want to pan what's left of my Hula Bronzer. Now, this isn't going to be the traditional color that you're familiar with when it comes to Hula Bronzer because normally it is a, uh, a matte bronzer with a little bit of a cooler tone, but I actually, I have a Flower Beauty Bronzer in Heat Wave. I want to say, let me pull it out for you so you can see. Um, where did I put it? Okay. So it's the Flower Luminous Bronzer in Heat Wave, and I really enjoy wearing this when I wear cooler toned makeup because it brings some life and warmth back to my face. And so um, as I got down to the bottom of this Hula Bronzer and hit pan, I decided to go on and mix the two together and just put a little bit so that way I get the best of both worlds because I love this for the majority of my looks but I also love this for cooler tones. And so it really has given me a nice subtle glow to my makeup that I enjoy. And since I have other boxes of Hula Bronzer in my backup stash, because this is my favorite bronzer um, of all time, I thought that that might be a fun way. And then it also gives me a way to use up some more of this if I don't wanna just go with a, a luminous bronzer on its own. So that's where we are. I'm hoping that I can finish this probably by the end of November. We'll see because there isn't too, too much in there, but I definitely need to get working on it. Then I have two more products. I have panned one of these in the past, but I thought it was just appropriate to add this in. It is another pot of the Soft Ochre um, Pro Longwear Paint Pot from MAC, just because I do have several backups of this. This is my go-to eyeshadow primer. I have not found anything that I like as well. Um, as I like this eyeshadow primer, the way that I like to use this, because I used to go through and use my fingers, to apply the paint pot, but now I like going through with whatever beauty sponge I happen to have and I use the pointed end and I swirl it around one time um, in the eyeshadow primer and then I use one side to apply to one eye and then I flip the sponge over and use the other side to apply to the other eye and it works super well. It applies evenly and my eyeshadow does not budge at all during the day. So definitely even though I can get kind of bored with this product every once in a while. It's it's the best eyeshadow primer that I have used for my particular makeup wants and desires. And so this is a staple in my collection. Like if MAC ever discontinued this shade, I would be devastated. <laughs> um, I would find something else, but I would be devastated because this is such a good um, shade. And in fact, the Soft Ochre, it's, it's kind of a, a yellowish cream. Um, but it really does a wonderful job at brightening up the eye to really make those shadows transfer quite well because I've tried painterly and I've tried some of the other shades um, in the um, paint pots and they just don't do quite as well as soft ochre on my skin. This is just basic, boring, 
you can put any eyeshadow on top of it and it works whereas painterly it kind of it did the job like my eyeshadow didn't move but it just didn't have the brightening effect that i was looking for and some of the other shades you know you use them as traditional cream shadows whereas this i'm using as a base so a little bit more information than i guess you needed but that's how it works for me and then lastly item number 12 is going to be this lipstick from mac in the shade cream in your coffee i have had this lipstick for quite a while i bought it because I was influenced watching YouTube videos on products in my MAC lipstick collection. It's a good neutral everyday color. It's currently what I'm wearing. I like to use it on top of MAC World Lip Pencil. It's just a basic neutral, there's nothing to write home about, kind of a my lips but better shade. But like I said, since I've had this in my collection for a while, I really just want to use this and see how much I can get out of it before it goes bad because I'm not really sure, I'm honestly not really sure how long I've got on the life of this lipstick. So I've done a really good job on clearing out old lipsticks out of my collection and I only have what I love now and products that I'm sure are going to have a little bit of stability for the next bit where I can have an opportunity to actually use them and hopefully use some of them up but this is one of the ones that's a little bit questionable and I, I definitely wanna make sure that I use it because it's a lovely color. I love using this for every day, but I just need to get in there and use it. So that wraps it up. Like I said, 12 items, I've got a couple of gimmies. And so as I finish things, I'm gonna update you once a month um, around this time every month to see where I am with these products. And we're just, we're gonna get back in the habit. In any case, I hope that you are having fun with your makeup, that you are finding things that you love and that you're enjoying um, the process of putting on your makeup. If you're doing a Project 10 pan or any type of Project Pan, I love watching those videos. So I'm busily trying to um, get caught up on everybody's videos. So if you are starting a Project Pan of your own, let me know because I'd love to come check out the things that you are enjoying and loving and what you're going to be working through because it's always nice to share some inspiration. So until next time, take care. I look forward to seeing you very, very soon, hopefully with that vanity um, tour coming up next or maybe the video after because I have some other things I want to film. So take care and I'll see you later. Adios.